Hello, all my yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome to our Friday Fun Day. I'm real excited about today's project because this is a special request from a history teacher. What this is is a reader's glasses bag with a little charm on it. It has a wrist handle, and it's the perfect size for your readers. But if you don't wear readers or you're not giving this to someone who wears readers, it will fit your basic sunglasses as long as they're not the great big size. Although this is quite stretchy and probably would fit some of the bigger size glasses. It's really quick and easy to make and makes a great teacher gift. And it was a request from a history teacher that likes to have her readers with her and she kept losing them and she said have you ever made one of these can you make it with a wrist handle so i can put it on my wrist when i go to another class because she's not always in the same room she wants to be able to move and take her things with her she can pick up her laptop her ipad and her other things to take with her and put this on her wrist and not lose her eyeglasses all right or her reading glasses and this is also a great thing maybe to take on vacation. I keep a pair of my husband's readers in my purse or my bag so he can read the menu or the hymnal at church. Okay, so this is also great for that. All right, it's a really easy pattern. I put it at a beginner level because you're only doing rows of single crochets. And the most difficult part actually is the beginning where we learn to stitch on the other side of the chain, but it's super easy and you'll get it no problem. All right, so this measures approximately seven inches tall and it's about eight inches all the way around. So it's about four and four. And again, if you want to add more chains to your original chain, you can make it for a bigger pair of glasses. Okay, super easy, super fun. It's a great Friday fun day. And I added this special little charm here because the teacher's favorite color is purple and she loves purple flowers. And so I thought that would be fun just to make it a little more personal for her. Now you can find this complete pattern as always with pictures on my blog. And I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. So to make a reader's glasses case, or just a glasses case, you're going to need, of course, some yarn. And we're using medium weight number four yarn. I'm using yarn from my scraps. I've got, this is Vanna's Choice in Purple Mist. And then some just white that I had on hand. I think this is just from I Love This Yarn Hobby Lobby both medium weight number four yarns and you're going to need approximately an ounce of each color but that's going a little high i don't think i even use that much but about an ounce from two different colors all right of course i've got my readers here the other things you're going to need is you're going to need one stitch marker because we're going to be stitching in the round we're not going to be joining we're going to be stitching in the round and you'll need to mark each one of your rows I have a little charm here that I made with some beads and this is um, one that I just had on hand and I just added that because it matched and it's pretty just for something fun. You'll also need a button that you were going to sew on in order to close our bag and this is a, about a half inch to three quarter inch button. And then we'll be stitching today with our H hook which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a needle for weaving in ends and sewing on that button and a pair of scissors. We're going to be starting at the bottom of our glasses case and working our way up. I've got my stitch marker here ready and I've also got my white yarn over here and that's because we're going to be striping the bag but remember you can do it all in one color and you can stripe it as often as you want. All right, so we're going to begin with our slip knot and we're going to loosely chain 11 chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10 and 11. And we do want this just a little bit loose because we're going to be stitching on both sides of our chain. We're going to begin by stitching a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. One, two. Now we're going to stitch a single crochet in the next eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That leaves one chain, and in this last chain, we're going to stitch two single crochets. One and two. So we have 11 single crochets because we began in the second chain from the hook, then we stitched one in the next eight, and then two. So eight plus one is nine, 10, 11. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn our work this way, and we're gonna work down the opposite or other side of our chain. All right, so we're going to stitch one single crochet in the next nine stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And that leaves that last chain. And in this last chain, we're going to stitch two single crochets. One and two. So we have 11 on the first side and 11 on the second side. So we have a total of 22 single crochets for row one. We're not going to join. So we're gonna grab that stitch marker and we're gonna mark that last stitch on that row. So for row one, we have 22 single crochets. So let's do row two. Now we're not going to join, so we're gonna go right in that first single crochet and stitch a single crochet. And then we're going to stitch one single crochet in each of those 22 single crochets working all the way around. And this is going to make the bottom of our case. We just keep going on around here. And we'll stitch one single crochet in each single crochet around until we reach that stitch marker. And I like to mark the last stitch of each row. Some people prefer to do the first stitch. I do the last stitch. It's just a preference. Both ways work just fine. But I'm going to take that stitch marker out and I'm going to place my single crochet in the last stitch and then I'll put my stitch marker back in. And so for round two, you'll have 22 single crochets again. Now for row three and row four, we're just going to repeat what we did for row two. We'll single crochet in each of the 22 stitches around. We'll move our stitch marker up and our, in our last stitch, So I'm just going to stitch two more rows of one single crochet in each of the single crochets around. Each row will have 22 single crochets and I'll move that stitch marker up each row. And the purpose of the stitch marker is to mark each row and to tell us where we started and stopped. And that's why I prefer putting that stitch marker in the last stitch of each row instead of the first. If you prefer to put it in the first stitch, it's totally fine. You do what works best for you. So I'm stitching two more rows of one single crochet 
in each stitch around, moving that stitch marker up each row. I have completed those two additional rows of single crochet. So we have one, two, three, four rows of single crochet. What we're going to do now is we're going to turn this out because we want this to be the outside of our bag. I'm just going to take that and put that inside. I can weave that in later. I'm not going to worry about it right now. All right. So one, two, three, four rows of single crochet. Now I'm going to change colors to make my two rows of white. All right. So I'm just going to go in that next single crochet, pull in that white, and finish my single crochet. There we go. Snug everything down. I am not going to cut my purple yarn because we're going to be carrying the yarn up on the inside of our bag. All right, and so there's one, and I'm going to stitch two rows of the white. One single crochet in each single crochet around. And I'm stitching two rows of the white for a stripe. This is a super simple pattern. You can do as many stripes as you want, or you can do it all in a solid color. It's just a really super simple pattern to learn how to make a really easy glasses case. All right, so I'm gonna head on around here till I reach my stitch marker. Whoops, my yarn jumped out of my bowl there. There we go. And even though that stitch marker count, um, marks your last stitch, it's a good idea to go ahead and count as you go so that you don't get off count. Now it looks like I'm off count on this next stitch, but actually this is where we brought in the white. All right, so that's the first stitch of our next row and I'm going to stitch one more row of the white. Again, one single crochet in each of our single crochets around until we reach where we marked it with our stitch marker. And again, I'm marking the last stitch of each row with my stitch marker. Now I've stitched those two rows of white. I do wanna show you something if you don't want this little blurp of purple in here, what you can do is when you bring your purple in, I'm gonna remove the stitch marker for just a second. Okay, so on this last stitch, we're going to begin, and then we'll grab the purple and finish with that. All right, drop that white, and then we'll stitch our first stitch in the next color. And that gives you a little bit more uh, pronounced color change. And also, you don't have that, whoops, I'm putting that in the wrong one. I need to put it in the last white one. There we go. You'll not have this little blurp of color that kind of pops through. All right. So what we're going to do now for the next three rows is we're just going to continue doing or repeat what we've been doing. The only difference is for the purple, we're going to do three rows of single crochet instead of two, like we did with the white. All right, so there's our stripes forming. And so what we're going to do is we're going to repeat stitching one single crochet and each single crochet around for three rows of purple. I have completed those three rows of purple, marked it my last stitch with my stitch marker. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat these five rows. And we're gonna do this three more times. Two rows of white, three rows of purple. Two rows of white, three rows of purple. Two rows of white, three rows of purple two rows of white, three rows of purple. So we're repeating row five, six, seven, eight, and nine. 
you're going to repeat that three more times. I have finished those repeats. So we have one, two, three repeats of our two white and three purple rows. And this gets us up to row 24. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a row of slip stitches and we're also going to make that button loop. All right, so we're going to slip stitch in the next six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we're going to chain 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. To make that button loop, we're going to slip stitch in the sixth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if your button is a little bit bigger, you may wanna make your loop bigger, so keep that in mind, or if it's smaller. Now we're just gonna slip stitch down these chains back to the bag. All right, now we're gonna slip stitch in that next stitch and then slip stitch all the way back around to where our stitch marker is. And see that makes a nice button loop. So I've slip stitched the rest of the way around the top of my bag. I'm gonna pull out that stitch marker and I'm going to slip stitch in that last stitch and then I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch in that first slip stitch. So I guess that is a join on that last row. We'll cut our yarn. Where is that string? There it is. <laughs> All right, now I wanna go to the next stitch and pull that loop to the inside. And now we need to take a few minutes and weave in our ends. We'll have beginning and ends where we have our purple and our white that we need to weave in. So we'll just go ahead and grab our needle and tidy up our bag. And then I'll show you how to add the button and the wrist holder as well as that charm. So I decided to use this purple button and I wanna line this up where I want it to go. We want it to be a nice fit. So it's gonna go right here. So what I do is I take my needle that I have the yarn on and I'll make a loop And I just do this so that it marks the spot as well as keeps my other end from coming out when I'm trying to sew this button on. All right, so I'm gonna stitch my button on. When you're sewing on a button onto crochet or knitting, you need to make sure you go in some good sturdy stitches and not the holes underneath. All right, now this button holds a little bit snug, so I'm just gonna do those two stitches We'll pull that to the inside. I'm gonna make sure that's on there nice and snug. Yep, then I'll just take my needle or my crochet hook and pull that to the inside. And then, I'll show you the inside. I'm just gonna tie some knots because it is a button. I do not want that to come undone as I'm sure it's going to be used often, pulled in and out of that button loop. Pull those through. There we go. And we'll just clip that. Then we'll give it a test, make sure it works. All right, so now my glasses case has a nice sturdy button loop and button. But the teacher that I'm making this for requested a wrist loop to carry it with. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So the little wrist handle is super easy. And if you wanted to make it an even longer handle, it's super easy. So I went ahead and just attached my trinket or charm on there that I made. So the first thing I'm going to do is just tie a little knot so that my charm doesn't come off while I'm stitching, okay? All right, so I'm gonna put it on this side. 
I'm gonna go from behind and I'm gonna go through that first row of single crochet and slip stitches, okay? So I'm just gonna grab a loop and now I'm going to chain 24 chains. One, two, and you'll notice also, I forgot to mention, I'm using two strands of yarn, one of each color, and if you do this all in one color, you can do this all in one color as well. You want two strands so that the, the bag handle is nice and sturdy, all right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, whoops, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. That is the length that I thought would work perfect for this particular teacher. If you want it longer, just add a few more chains, or if you wanna make it super long so you can hang it around your neck. All right, so now we have our handle. We're gonna go right back through the end. We'll slip stitch there and then slip stitch there. All right, so now what we wanna make sure is we grab this end where we added the charm and we're gonna to go to the inside of the bag. And we don't want that charm to come through. We want that to stay up front. There we go. And now I'm just going to tie a really nice secure knot. And I'm going to be careful not to pull that charm to the inside of my bag. We don't want the handle coming off and so a really good secure knot is important. Give it a good hard tug because I don't want that coming in done. There we go. Go ahead and clip that, hide that inside. And now we have a bag with a beautiful charm. Now at first I was going to put it on this side, but I decided to put it on this side because I felt like that's the way that the teacher would like it so that she can just put it on her wrist and if she wants to open her bag to grab her glasses, it works just fine. All right, so let's open up the button. Let's slide a pair of readers inside. And now she's never going to lose her pair of readers because she has a personal bag with a personal charm in her favorite colors. That's our reader's glasses bag. And remember, they'll work for most of your sunglasses as long as they're not the really great big ones like I like to wear. Ha, ha, ha.